In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about ethical communication and what it means to be an ethical communicator. This is something that's really critically important to people worldwide, no matter who you are, where you are, ethical communication should be important to you. I also want to talk just a little bit at the end then about how this affects us as Christians and what, you know, what impact and, and influence this may have on us as communicators, um, incorporating those Christian values as well. So let's just start with ethical communication, just some general principles of ethical communication. Uh, first and foremost, this one should be uh, pretty pretty clear, I would think, but be truthful and honest. When, we, when we're communicating with other people, we need to do so honestly, sharing information that is, to the best of our knowledge, truthful, and uh, and just, you know, being you know, honesty is the best policy. So, uh, so just be truthful and honest. As an ethical communicator, that's so critically important. We need to practice active listening as well, uh, and not just fall back into some of our bad listening habits like pseudo-listening, where we pretend to listen and we make the right noises, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm, and we nod and things, but we're not really listening, or selective listening, all those types of listening uh, aren't great uh, listening. So we need to really listen uh, in a sense that, that we can hear the other person, that we can work to understand them, um, that we can <clears throat> remember and recall that information, that we can interpret it properly and evaluate that information, and then that we respond as well, whether that's verbally or non-verbally, whatever the case. We need to practice these active listening skills and really be present and demonstrate to others um, that we are listening. That's an important principle of ethical communication. In addition to active listening, we want to avoid judgment at least until we've got all the facts. And not that we should be judging in general, but we certainly don't want to be quick to judgment. We want to take people as they come, and we want to communicate with them in an honest and fair way, um, without prejudice. Uh, you know, Once we've made a determination, once we have more facts, we've gathered more information, then we're not, you know, there's a difference between judgment and acting on the, the knowledge that you have and the facts that you've gathered <clears throat> and things that you know about that person and that situation as opposed to just doing things because of your perceptions of that situation. So we need to avoid judging and uh, judging people and judging situations without having full knowledge of the facts. We also want to speak from our own experience. We don't want to use you know, second-hand information. We don't want to borrow experiences from other people or anything like that. We want to communicate with somebody from the perspective of our own experience, our own knowledge, and uh, and our own beliefs, right, instead of uh, again, borrowing those things from others. I want to consider the receiver's preferred channel. You may know somebody who um, doesn't like to text, or doesn't like to email, or doesn't like to talk on the phone, or whatever. We need to consider that. Now, there are occasions where that may be necessary, and that may be the best channel that we can <coughs> excuse me, come up with to communicate with that person. But we want to consider that you know, if they don't like the text, then let's not send them 400 texts a day. Let's find a different way to communicate with them um, and, and go about it that way. Some additional principles of ethical communication. We need to strive to understand. We don't just want to, you know, let things come in one ear and out the other and not really think about it and process it. We need to really, again, as active listeners, understanding should be a part of that. We need to work to comprehend what that person is saying and really, truly understand it. We want to stay positive. Try and avoid a negative tone whenever possible. That doesn't mean we can't. You know, sometimes we need to be honest with people and, and tell them when they've, you know, when we think they're in the wrong or they've done something to to harm us or offend us or whatever. But we don't have to do so in an entirely negative way, in an attacking, aggressive way. We can stay positive. We can keep the relationship in mind. We can um, stay positive in, in our tone, even when we're having difficult conversations. Those can be growth opportunities and so forth. But we need to just, uh, as much as possible, stay positive as ethical communicators. We want to avoid interrupting. Again, this is a, a really important aspect of active listening in and of itself. So we want to avoid interrupting other people. Um, because when you interrupt, it just indicates that you're not really listening to that person. doesn't mean you can't say things. doesn't mean you can't interject things into the conversation. But we want to avoid interrupting because it's a really poor listening habit. We want to respect privacy and confidentiality. When someone tells you something in confidence, we need to keep it in confidence. We need to, to respect their privacy and not share their news with everybody and, and talk about their business with everybody. Um, whether whether it's something that they tell us or it's something we find out in another way, 
and we need to respect their privacy and the, and the confidentiality of other people. And then we need to accept responsibility. Uh, one thing that ethical communicators do is they use a lot of I language, uh, and they accept responsibility for things that they say. I feel, I believe, I did, I want this, I these things, right? That doesn't. That's we don't want to do that in a self-centered way, in a selfish way, but but in a way that accepts responsibility for these things. When something happens, we need to take responsibility for the things that we say, and so we need to be be ready to do that, and not just say it in a way that kind of allows us an out so to speak, right? We don't want to, you know, leave enough wiggle room and say, well, I didn't really say that. What I said was, you know, I said this, and, I, you know, we're being very ambiguous and kind of beating around the bushes, so to speak. But when when we say something, we ought to uh, to say so um, in confidence and say so in a way that, that allows us to accept responsibility then for that statement. Finally, we're talking about how these values, how these values of ethical communicators relate to us as Christians. So Christian values in communication are also also ethical uh, values in communication. But uh, let's talk specifically about and some of the there's going to be some crossover here. But as Christians, things we ought to be particularly concerned with, first of all, understanding the power of language, understanding that language has power, has impact. And so we need to uh, appreciate that and respect that power and use language in a way that is um, that is as Christ-like as possible, right? Not that, you know, we're never going to be uh, on the same level as Christ. Obviously, we all know that, right? But we can behave in a way that is as Christ-like as we can manage. As, as flawed, fallible humans, one of the ways that we can do that is understand our language. And that old saying, sticks and stones may uh, break my bones, but words will never harm me. What a load of crap, right? I mean, words hurt. They hurt all the time, and we need to use language responsibly and understand the power of that language. We need to listen well. This is something we've talked about a couple times now in this thing, so you can understand the, the importance. But we need to listen well. We need to listen for comprehension, listen for, uh, with a critical ear, we need to listen with empathy. I mean, again, if you go back into uh, Scripture, one of the things Jesus does best is listen. I mean, he listens to people when they have an issue, when they have a problem. He listens, and then he is able to get to the core of that issue. And I oftentimes say, you know, you, you're saying this, but what, what the problem really is is over here, right? This is the real issue. You can't do that without listening, right? You can't do that without getting to know that person, getting to know that issue. Um, so one really Christ-like behavior is to listen well. We need to know our audience, okay? Uh, that's part of an ethical ethical standard in communication, too, is to know our audience. Who are we speaking to? Uh, again, go back into Scripture, and Christ models this for us. He didn't use the same sermon or the same message all the time, right? He adapted his message in all these different situations. Another great example of this scripturally is Paul. Okay, When Paul goes into Athens... Right, and he's he's uh, speaking in Athens, and he's invited to 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 speak to this group of of great intellectuals. Right, well, he adapts his message to 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 what he knows about these people. Because let's not forget, Paul is a serious intellectual himself. Right, I mean, he he came up studying the Torah, and 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 uh, and you know, so he was no uh, no lightweight when it came to intellectualism. So he knew how these people thought, knew what they thought, and after walking around Athens all that time and looking at all the you know statues to the different gods, he said to these people, you know, I see you have a statue uh, that says just to the unknown god, and they're just trying to cover all their bases, right? He said, that god is not unknown to me. I know that god. That's the god that I serve. And so he really was able to, to know his audience and connect with them in a very specific way then, right? Um, an ethical communicators do that. They know who they're talking to. And so they speak at their level, they speak their language, they speak in a way that they can understand and appreciate, and all of these different types of things, right? So ethical uh, communicators, and specifically Christian communicators valuing ethics, will know their audience. We'll understand, too, ethically, that, that all messages inherently involve our faith. You just do. All messages, regardless of who you're talking to or what you're talking about, if you're talking about the weather, you're talking about your sports team, you're talking about whatever, it all comes back to our faith. If they know that you're a person of faith, or if, they, if you want them to kind of understand that, even without saying it, as St. Francis of Assisi said, right, uh, preach gospel at all times, use words if necessary. So all of our messages in, inherently involve our faith, uh, because as Christians, you know, that, that faith... Uh, 
inhibits everything, not inhibits, sorry, in, in, uh, in, is imbued in everything that we do. It does not inhibit. That was the wrong word. It imbues everything that we do. It's, it's, it's all part of it. It's all wrapped up in there. So uh, we need to understand as ethical communicators, there's no difference. There's no, there's no shut-off valve um, for, for, for sharing our Christian values as a communicator. They all, all of these messages inherently involve our faith. And we need to take this seriously. This is something that we need to, 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 to know and to take seriously and to consider um, the, the importance of these ethics and these values in our communication because, again, because all of our messages inherently involve our faith, we need to remember that we are, uh, at all times, we are planting seeds. We are constantly planting seeds, right? And we can be planting seeds of faith in people or we can be planting seeds of doubt in people based on our actions, based on the way that we treat them, based on the way that we communicate with them, whether we're communicating ethically or not. So we need to consider all of this, that we're planting seeds, and we may not see the plant that grows there, but people are paying attention to us, and they're, they're watching us to see if our, our actions match our words. Right? So we need to, to communicate ethically, and we need to treat people um, responsibly as Christians, and, and keep that in mind as well. If you have any questions about this or anything else uh, related uh, to, to ethical communication or, or you know, content such as that, don't hesitate to email me. I'd be happy to respond to emails and always enjoy hearing uh, from people via email. Uh, in the meantime, um, please just consider, you know, give great thought to how you communicate, whether you're following these ethical principles and, uh, and what you can do to become a more ethical communicator.